On today's video, I'm going to finally reveal how I did this. How you can do it, even if you don't have a powerful GPU. And if you do not watch this video in its entirety, I will look for you. I will find you. And you know. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI and I'm almost giddy about sharing this with you. I've wanted to share it with you for quite some time because this update of FaceFusion, the software we're going to share with you today, actually happened like a week ago. But do you know what? I was waiting. I was waiting. It was driving me crazy, but I was waiting till it got over on Mimic PC so that those of you who do not have GPUs and cannot download this and you absolutely have the ability to download this without having to pay anything if you've got the GPU to run it. But if you do not, Mimic PC is a great way to get started with this and many other cool AI software solutions without having to fork out for an expensive GPU. Mimic PC is a regular sponsor of this program and we are greatly appreciative of what they're doing because it does make these AI tools accessible to people who otherwise would just be looking at it going, well, I wish I could do that one day. So let's dig into Face Fusion. Assuming you have a Mimic PC account, when you log in, you'll just simply click add new app. And what you're looking for is Face Fusion. Now, Face Fusion is much more now than a simple face swap software. You can do lip syncing, you can do colorization and repair of old video. It's truly phenomenal, and the 3.0 release should get you pretty excited if face swapping is your thing. When you go to add this app, as I record this today, they still are showing that it's version 2.6.0, but they actually have 3.0. And when you click Get Started here and choose your machine, and as always, I'll recommend either a large or a large pro, just so you can have more speed in your computing time, click on Create and Start, and in just a couple of minutes, you'll be running Face Fusion 3.0 on a high-end PC with all the speed and power that it affords. If you do have a GPU powerful enough to run this software, I will leave links in the descriptions to places where you can go to download the and install the software on your own system. The fact that you get all these features in an open source solution is really mind boggling. Once the interface comes up on the screen, we can click this little button here to get rid of this right panel because we absolutely don't need it. There's lots of things you can tweak and play with. Again, as I always try to do with these types of videos, I'm gonna give you the basic functionality, show you how cool it is without having to dig deep into settings and changes or anything like that. Right out of the box, this thing is ready to do some pretty impressive things. There are quite a few things that this program does and it all starts here with the processor. So I'm going to show you some of the more exciting things like face swapping, age modifying, being able to do a custom expression and things like that. The rest of this panel has information about the various models and settings that you're using. Again, you really don't need to change much of this to get started because it's set up and ready to go on this particular computer that you're running remotely right out of the box. So let's not mess around. Let's just get right into explaining how I did that opening video, which is the same method I use to produce the ending of every video I post. In this example, let's start with the target, the video that is going to have the face replaced in it. I just drag this, which is me just talking with my normal face and my normal voice, headphone time. On today's video, I'm going to finally reveal how I did this. Okay, now we just need the face that we want to swap on there. There's a little bit of an art to this because some faces, even though it's the same person, look far better on a target than others. For example, I started with this picture of Liam Neeson. And as soon as you drop one in there, you get a preview over here. Now you'll notice that right now the resolution in here is fairly poor. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the face enhancer. The face enhancer uses various models that you can choose from from this drop down list. If you're new to all this, just leave it at the default and you'll be fine. Now you'll see that the image is sharpened up, but that's not really the Liam Neeson look I was looking for. I can use this slider to scan through the video and watch how it's looking. It's not bad. I just think I want something a little bit edgier maybe. So I'm going to clear this and just try another face. I'll drop that one in there. No, that looks really weird. So I'm not using that one. And ultimately I decided on this one. You always want to scan through bits and pieces of the video because sometimes your movements can take you out of tracking and you want to make sure that you make adjustments. In this case, I'm looking straight at the camera. It's a pretty easy track. It's going to stick. We're good. At this point, I could render this out, but what I did for the video at the beginning was I used the age modifier to add a little bit of age here. So I'm actually going to take off the face enhancer because the face enhancer is the last thing in the chain that I want to accomplish. I want to do any modifications to the face and then put that finishing touch on it. So I always add that last. And the order that these appear from left to right and up and down is the order in which they are processed. So I wanted to add age here. I'm going to add that now by clicking on age modifier, allow the model to load that does that magic. And now you'll see I have a new slider here, age modifier direction. I do want to put the face enhancer back on. I wouldn't normally do that for this particular adjustment, but I just want this to look good for you. So as you can probably predict, if I were to slide this all the way over to the right, I'm going to get a much older version. And if I move it all the way over to the left, I'm going to get a much younger version of my 
swapped out face. So in this case, I probably put it somewhere around 65 and then just clicked start. Now, before I do that, let me show you what's going on down here. One of the cool new features of version 3.0 is the ability to do batch jobs. If I was to click it right now, this would be a one-off job. It says right here, the workflow that I'm using is Instant Runner, which as it applies, as soon as I click this, it's gonna start this job. But I also have the ability to create a batch of jobs and I'll demonstrate that in just a few minutes. So after a few minutes, we end up with this. On today's video, I'm going to finally reveal how I did this. Basically, it's the opener without the voice change. So then I just converted the audio of that video to an MP3 file, and in my case, I uploaded it to Eleven Labs. But feel free to use any AI voice cloning software you have access to. Right now, I'm using Eleven Labs because it provides me a quick way to just do a drag and drop voice conversion. So I'm just going to drag that audio here. By the way, I could have uploaded the video, but they do have a 50 megabyte maximum for the upload files, and this video was just a little bit too large. So in this case, I did convert the audio of that video to an mp3 so now i have the original on today's video i'm going to finally reveal and now i just choose the voice i want from my library and click on generate speech on today's video i'm going to finally reveal how i did this and simply replace that audio with the original audio in your favorite video editor of choice so see super simple but that's just the beginning of the story with this new version let's create a whole new example and i'll show you something really fun I'm going to clear out the source. I'm going to clear out the target. For a lot of the examples I'm using on this video, I use things that I downloaded from Pexels, which offers free stock photos and video with no royalties or licenses. So first, let's replace this face. First, let's go ahead and clear out these enhancers. And just start with the face swapper. We'll use my VA Presley again, because she's such a good sport about this stuff. And you can see that the face was very quickly replaced. We'll, sc we'll scroll through it here. Now, you'll see right here that I've gotten to a frame where it's not it did not latch onto her face. The first thing I'm gonna do is click on this reference image here because that is telling it that this is the face we want replaced and that alone fixed it. Sometimes if it doesn't fix it, you might wanna change the reference face distance image either up or down to see if it'll lock in better. But basically you do wanna go through the clip and make sure there's no spaces where the face drops out. Before I put all the enhancement on that because it just adds time to displaying this, let's play with the face editor a little bit. If you've seen any of my videos recently on live portrait, which allows you to bring facial animation to video videos and still images by using a driving video of an actual person talking, you might be interested to know that similar technology is going into your ability to change the facial expressions of the people in your video. So this is the default expression that we have with her right here. So right here, she's just got a normal smile on her face. I'm going to use the eyebrow direction. I'm going to crank it all the way up and let's see what happens to the image. Okay, her eyebrows have raised if I lower them. Now her eyebrows are lower. I'm going to put them back there. Now, she may be a little far to be able to notice this, but I'm going to change the gaze, the horizontal gaze direction. I'm going to move this over to the right, and you'll see that her pupils have moved over to my right proper, her left. If I move it the other way, you see now she's looking the other way. And these settings will hold the entire video. We can look up, we can look down, we can make the eyes more open <laughs> to a comical degree, or close them. We can open the mouth more. <laughs> or lock it up if we don't want the mouth open. This says face editor mouth grim. I believe they mean grin because that's what she's doing here. And then we have pout. <laughs> How well these look is going to depend on the starting image, of course. We can do some really silly looking things with the vertical mouth position by moving it well all the way up. Or moving it way down. And then maybe moving it all the way to the side. <laughs> we can change the direction the head is pointing and tilted. Let's open that mouth more. So now we've got this really interesting look on her face. And if we render this, we end up with something like this. Now, one thing to be cognizant of, which I was not when I hit go on this last round, was the output of the video size that you're creating. These files that I downloaded from Pexels are almost all 4K, and that's kind of unreasonable, certainly for this demonstration. So what I should have done was gone down here to output video resolution and chosen something a little bit more sane. That would speed up the time considerably. So be aware of the actual resolution you need for your project. Another really cool feature that Face Fusion brings to the table is lip sync. To be able to upload an audio file that will drive the animation of any video that you upload. Let me give you an example. Let's take this stock video here. Her mouth isn't moving, she isn't saying anything, but she's just looking at the camera. If we just drag a face image onto the source, we will get a face replacement, we can do the face enhancer, we can do all the things that we could do before. However, the lip sync won't work. There's two things we have to do. Number one, we have to turn the lip syncer on. And just like I mentioned before, I'll actually wanna turn the face enhancer off and then turn it back on again, so it's the last thing in the chain. But to make lip sync work, you actually need to drag the source image along with the audio file 
into the source area at the same time. So let's clear this out. We'll go back over here to my magical folder and I will get the lip sync female MP3 file. I will also get the face that I want swapped in. I'll just drag them both onto the interface and preview the audio real quick. And now I'm saying something just to get the lips. This is, a, this is a very big preview, but let me scroll through. This video is 38 seconds long, and the audio clip I've got here is only 9 seconds long, so I have no need to render this entire video. So that's where you use the trim frame function. So I'm going to bring this down to around 250 frames. We'll scroll through the preview a little bit, and you'll see that the lips are actually moving. Where before they were closed, they're actually making an adjustment based on what's being said. So now when we generate this, and now I'm saying something just to get the lips to move. Lip sync? Or maybe I'm supposed to put lips in a sink. Yikes, I should look into this. Let me demonstrate two other use cases in one example. What if you've got two people that you want their faces swapped out? And what if one or both of those people have something in front of their face, like glasses or something, that might potentially screw up a face swap? Well, we're going to demonstrate that right now. Here's our target video. We'll start with the first face replacement. I'll do the girl here. Drag in the face, choose the reference face so it knows who am I doing this with, and there it is. We're going to scroll through a little bit and make sure the face sticks. Looks pretty good. We don't need the lip syncer on, so I'll just turn that off. So now we've got everything done for this first pass, swapping out our first face on the video. This is where we'll use this batch feature for something other than just creating a bunch of different jobs one after another. Let's talk about how this scheduler works. As I showed you, the default view is the instant runner. You click start, it goes. But we also have job manager. Now in this case, we're going to create a job. And the job here is we're going to replace these two faces of these two outdoor people. So what if we just called this thing outdoors? All right. So before we do anything, we're just going to click apply and it's going to create a job. Now that job is added. It defaults to the next thing you're going to do, which is to add a step to the job. That's what we've just set up here. We've got our face set up. We've got our enhancement all done. We're good to go. The job ID is chosen. We'll click apply. So now we want to set up our next step, which is the face swap for the male. So we're going to clear out the source here, bring in a new source, make sure the guy is chosen. You'll notice this guy is wearing glasses, and that could normally be a problem, although the software is already pretty good at doing something about that and not trying to superimpose the face on it. Look at the difference if I turn on occlusion and when I turn it off. So right now it's off. If I turn it on, now the sunglasses are much more solid. Watch again as I turn it off. You can see that it tried to sort of overlay the face a little bit. You see my eyes and so on. If we turn on occlusion, it keeps the details of the rest of the face, but masks out those glasses. Now you'll notice the face swap that we did before is not reflected here. This is another step in the job. So again, we've got the face swapper. We've got the face enhancer chosen. We've got occlusion checked. We're ready to add this step. But if I just add step right here, if I was to click apply, this would create a separate job where my face was getting applied to this video here and not the video that was created before with the woman's face. To make sure this second face swap takes place on the video that was just swapped, we're going to click on remix step rather than add step. That will tell the system to bring in the video that you just rendered as the target video. And we've given it instructions on where to put the new face. So when this whole thing runs and completes, you'll have one video with both faces swapped out. But you're not ready to do that yet. So I choose Job Remix. I click on Apply. And if I had other steps to do, I would just keep adding steps all day long, like if I had other people to switch out. But I don't. That's all I need to do. So now the last thing I'm going to do is from the Job Action section, I'm going to click on Job Submit. Make sure the correct ID is chosen outdoors and click on Apply. Now this job is complete and ready to run. To do that, I go back to the job runner, make sure that job run is chosen, and the job ID is the one we just created, and click on start. And then when it's complete, you've got both face swaps done. Finally, let me show you something just so cool. It's not necessarily a face swap, but it can certainly be used in combination with it, and that is the frame colorizer. So let me turn off the face swapper for right now, turn on the frame colorizer, and in this case, I'm going to take a black and white video, and I'm going to drop it into the target area. And as soon as I do, up in the preview section, we get a colorized version of it. We can scroll through and see that without telling it anything, it knew what to do with these colors. Before I render this, I want to make sure I turn off anything that might add time to the render, like occlusion, which is unnecessary for this. Check my output video resolution, because that was insane. Make sure I've got the instant runner set, and click Start. And now you've got this clearly old footage that is now nice and colorized. And you can see that the color actually stays pretty stable throughout the whole thing. So now I brought in one with people in it, so you can see how well it does skin tones. 
cruise through this. And of course, we can do face swap. Bring Presley in, choose that reference face, and make sure that face swapper is chosen. Scroll through. So now we've got the color and the face swap both going. Put a little face enhancement on that. As I preview up to this point, and I click the reference frame, it's not changing her image. So this is an opportunity for me to play with this reference face distance a little bit and see if that helps lock it on, which it did. So now let's just keep scanning through to make sure it doesn't pop off at any other times. Looks good. We'll click on start. So now we got a nice colorized HD face swap. This program has a lot of different things you can tweak and fiddle with, but I wanted to give you a basic overview to get you excited about what you could do with just some simple default settings. This is a powerful face swapping technology. Please use it responsibly. And if this is the type of thing you like to learn about, well, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? Because this is the type of things we cover all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will.